My Blood Brothers for Freedom. First and foremost, the most important thing in our lives, Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And remember, nothing says I love you, Mom, like a new gun. So, and as much ammo as you can load up. Uh, I'm honored and humbled and privileged to be here today. And as I said a moment ago off mic, I dedicate my every waking hour to the heroes of the U.S. military who have sacrificed so dearly. So all the vets out there, thank you. Freedom is not free, and this is cool. This is a cool little get-together here. But if you were a cool bass player, you couldn't be in my band. You gotta be a son of a bitch. And little doesn't cut the mustard either, but you obviously are more gung-ho. You obviously care more than people who aren't here. And I'm here today because I care more. And the most important charge, like Sheriff Max said, do join the Sheriff's and Peace Officers Association. Be sure you join that. Be sure you're a member of Gun Owners of America. Be sure you're a member of the NRA. Be sure you're a member of your State Firearms Association because that drives Nancy Pelosi crazy and that's your job. And I do this kind of stuff all over the country and I've been doing it for the last 45, 50 years because I've always stood up absolute, uncompromising, zero backing off the unambiguous Second Amendment. Keep means it's mine, you can't have it. Bear can only mean one thing. I got a couple on me right now and they're loaded. That's what keep and bear means. And right now, you cannot keep and bear in New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, California, or Illinois. Oh, you can get a permit to have a gun in your safe. That ain't keeping and bearing. That's hiding and safing. Here's what that means. If you are 18 years of age in the United States of America and have no felony conviction, and we need to get rid of about 90% of what are felony convictions, killing a deer out of season in Pennsylvania is the same as murdering a child. That's how stupid it's got. But anybody at the age of 18 without a felony conviction means you can keep and bear in the United States of America. 50 states, every city, every gas station, every restaurant, every school, every courthouse. That's keeping and bearing. Anything short of that is an infringement and those elected employees should be arrested and tried for treason. And I'd start with Eric Holder, Loretta Lynch, and Barack Obama, and then I'd just put Nancy Pelosi in the town square just for entertainment. So as I mentioned at the start of my little rant here, because I'm passionate about this, this is a small gathering. Surely, I'm confident that each of you must know dozens of people who care. Certainly each of you can get dozens of people who care to communicate with your elected employees and articulate that Brownback is not our friend. He's not standing up for a law he signed. Yeah. Certainly there's enough of us to turn that tide. A man is only good as his word. Yes. Ain't not a good man. Chris, would you, is there a chance you could? So anyhow, <laughs> you've got some real gung-ho, working hard, playing hard, constitutional shit kickers in the state of Kansas. The number one happens to be sitting to my right. But you, you need to find these constitutionalists 
And you have to use that as a litmus test for whether they deserve your vote. And not just your vote. We got the closest thing to Ted Nugent as you'll ever get in politics with Donald Trump in the White House. That's, that's as close as you're ever gonna get. And the reason he won is if you look at America, look at a, a map of the political America. There are no blue states. It's just massive, working hard, playing hard, in the asset column, shit kicker Americans across this country. There's only a few blue smudges where the high crime rate is celebrated. There's no red states, just blue high crime smudges. Where they have sanctuary cities. Who provides sanctuary to criminals? Criminals. The blue smudges don't believe in securing your borders. This is Planet of the Apes cuckoo's nest stuff. And if you know Democrats, you either need to fix them, shame them, or drive them nuts. And I perfected it. If you want a few tips, I'd be more than glad to share them with you. So this small, gung-ho, caring group is not about what's here in this room. It's about what you do when you go home. Right. Yeah. I give you a day off for Mother's Day, but Monday, yeah. by the way, all you guys, here's a little Uncle Ted tech tip for you. Every day is Mother's Day, okay? <laughs> How am I doing, Mom? Uh, that's the important vote right there. So when you go home, celebrate a great Mother's Day like you mean it. But on Monday, if you're not raising hell, you're Canadian. <laughs> if you're not causing squirm with your elected employees, you don't mean nothing. If you're not pissing off the assholes, you're an asshole. Hey, I'm pissing off and I know I'm amongst friends here. By the way, I know there's a couple of undercover uh, federal agents here. I'd like to invite them up here right now to debate me. Um, so go ahead, come on. Sessions is the attorney, a real attorney general. Sessions won't be running guns to the Mexican drug gangs. And even though I celebrate that, I think I also represent you, and I would like to hear from you if I don't. The president is draining the swamp, but it's vast and it's deep. But just those points I brought up, and I could bring up a bunch more, but those are huge steps in the right direction. But here's what I believe, and I think you do too, and I get this in my communications. Eric Holder should be arrested for yeah, violating sir. his oath to the Constitution. Barack Obama and Eric Holder should be held accountable for the murder of Brian Terry. Brian Terry, my fellow Michiganiac. Loretta Lynch should be arrested for meeting with Bill Clinton on the tarmac. But at that age, if they can have sex, I suppose we should give them a break. And anyway. I'm trying to keep things upbeat here. I'm, am I doing okay? These jokes, by the way, Larry Pratt wrote all these. I'm just reading from the teleprompter. And Lois Lerner should be arrested for treason. And Hillary Clinton should be arrested for treason. And the list, and the, the, the list is glaring. Perjury, all of them perjury. So we're heading in the right direction, but I met with the president two weeks ago. And somebody asked me, say, well, Ted, did he know anything about guns? And I said, he does know. <laughs> and I explained as many of these things to him as possible. And the president was at the head of the table, and Governor Palin was there, and I had Stephen Miller, his policy director. And every one of these points I brought up, the president would go, really? I did not know that. Stephen, are you making notes here? 
he, he wasn't aware of some of these most egregious violations that run amok in our government. But he did when I was done with him. Now, he's got a lot of work ahead of him. And I promise I represented your heart and soul just like I am here today. And I hope I'm doing a good job. And I hope I have done a good job. And when I was able to take care of Pierce Morgan so efficiently, the whole world was watching. And they saw that my self-evident truth and evidence destroyed his presumptions. And that's what I've been doing for 50 years. And I'm just a guitar player and I don't need to do this. Except that I need to do this. Because I reference once again all the flag draped coffins I have saluted. How dare I not fight for the freedoms those heroes died for every day of my life. And think of that when you write your senator, your congressman, your mayor, your governor. Write that when you write that second letter. Write that when, think that way. Think of those flag draped coffins. Those guys died for the U.S. Constitution while our elected employees are abusing it and violating it. Think that way when you send that email. And when you don't get a response, do not shrug your shoulders. Write another one. I've seen it happen. I've, I've been part of a movement for 50 years where we have changed insane laws and regulations. Slowly but surely we've done that. And I could name them here, but Google me. So if a, a stupid guitar player, I, I not only wrote Wang Dang Sweet Boom Tang, I meant it. So, so if I can do that, you can all do that. Thanks, Ted. You got to a quick question from I bought a quote with me today and he's a guy he's a guy named George George Washington this is what George Washington said firearms stand next in importance to the Constitution itself they are the American people's liberty teeth and keystone under independence George Mason George Mason was a rock star you don't hear about him as much as George Washington but he was from Virginia George Mason said this he was one of the founders to disarm the people is the most effectual way to enslave them. James Madison, father of the Constitution. Another Virginians. Virginia's pretty good, but we're better. Uh, James Madison. Americans have the right and advantage of being armed, unlike the people of other countries whose leaders are afraid to trust them with arms. That was James Madison 200 years ago. And that is even more so today. Um, some of you may know this, but I spent, uh, I spent four years living in England when I was in my 20s. And uh, some of my friends over there, now England was better then than it is now for a lot of reasons, but England was, uh, is a country where the, owning firearms is something only the very wealthy who have some special permit can do. You cannot own a handgun. You might own a long gun if you have a special permit that is very expensive to go pheasant hunting on a pheasant shoot. But that is the only time, and so guns are exotic in England. And that's one of the better countries in Europe. Some countries, the guns, you just don't see guns. And so I told some of my friends about how, hey, why don't you come to Kansas with me, and we'll go hunting, and, and if it's not hunting season, we'll just go shooting. And uh, here's a bunch of guns, you can shoot this and that. And they, they looked at me like I was from another planet. They thought that this place called Kansas, and this place called America, was some bizarre place where guns are everywhere, and you politicians talking about, oh, I want to create jobs, I want to grow the economy. Look, I got a simple solution. If you want to create a job for an American citizen tomorrow, deport an illegal alien today. <laughs> That's all you have to do if you want to create some jobs. And by the way, when I said illegal alien, that's not a dirty word, by the way. That's a word that's found in federal law. But according to the politically correct press, if you say illegal alien, you're, you are hating. You are being a hateful, horrible, racist person. No, you're not. They want you to say undocumented immigrant. Well, that's a contradiction in terms because an immigrant is someone who's got a green card. Doesn't even make any sense. Calling an illegal alien an undocumented immigrant is like calling a thief an undocumented owner. It's idiocy. Anyway, so I'm saying that we're going to keep fighting for the rights of U.S. citizens. We're going to make sure that only U.S. citizens vote. And we're going to keep Kansas number one when it comes to protecting the rights to keep and bear arms. 
So now I want to turn the stage over to somebody who knows more about the right to keeping and bearing arms than, oh, I don't know, just about anybody in this country. And that is Uncle Ted. Say hello to Ted Nugent. guys decided to come up with me. What do you got, gentlemen? So, uh, Ted, I'm Mike Boris from the National Founder of 3% United Patriots. From the badass-ass group of patriots to another badass patriot, we want to present you with official 3% United Patriots gear here. And Ted, we got one other thing here we think is going to be near and dear to your heart. I'm going to turn it over here to BC. It's almost as good, almost as good. A good buddy of mine that's also a member of the Kansas Studio had an idea, something to make for you. done a lot of research and came up with this. And I hope that it works for you and that you like it. You still with me out there? Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. I take this stuff to heart. Kansas! God bless you. I take these kind of uh, uh, tokens of appreciation for kicking ass like we the people are supposed to. And I take those to heart on behalf of not only we the people who are supposed to demand accountability from our elected employees, but most importantly on this beautiful day, before Mother's Day, the most important day of the year. But I, I do this on behalf of the men and women in the U.S. military who sacrifice every day so that we can have a constitutional republic and the freedom that is unique to America. So God bless the military, all you vets out there, all the active and your families, thank you for your sacrifice. And that's why I do this. I've saluted too many flag-draped coffins to fail to realize that freedom is not free, and I've bowed to these military heroes at the grave sites of the warriors that I will fight with every ounce of piss and vinegar that I have to demand the freedoms and the liberties and the rights that they died to provide. So as we celebrate this day, it's not just about the Second Amendment. It's about an American experiment in self-government. No every day when you wake up, I do it and I'm just a guitar player. No but Trump. every day when you wake up, especially when the jackbooted thugs are oppressing and controlling innocent Americans because they have a muffler without a permit, you have to have a permit to have a muffler for your gun, like it's Planet of the Apes or something. Every day, if you don't fight, like an American warrior and put demands and pressure on your elected employees to demand constitutional accountabilities, then you might as well move to Canada. You might as well move to Maryland. It's a suburb of Canada. In California, I don't even know what country that is. So I'm here today, I'm just a guitar player. I'm 69 years rocking my ass off. I know we're celebrating the attitude. Let's hear it for the attitude. But I am allergic to bullshit. And I'm addicted to self-evident truth, logic, and common sense. And if anybody asks, because America has been so dumbed down by an anti-American academia, an anti-American media, and for too many years an anti-American government, if anybody asked, be sure you repeat. Keep means it's mine, you can't have it. Yeah. Bear can only mean one thing. I've got a couple on me and they're loaded. We don't have a second amendment in America because unless you are 18 years of age without a felony conviction, 
The Second Amendment says that we can all carry a gun any damn where we please, any time we please, into any government building, into any school, into any post office, anywhere you damn well please. I have the right to keep and bear arms. Kiss my ass. Any questions? If you don't understand that, you can call 1-800-NUMNUT and Michael Jackson can tell you why you don't need personal hygiene. Any questions? So, it's, it's nice to be amongst patriots and shit kickers. I love you all. Do you feel the love? Do you celebrate self-evident truth with me? Are you willing to go the mile to prove that you earn your freedom because warriors have died to provide it. Are you ready to do that? Kansas is real good, but you're not done yet. I live in Texas, and it's real good, but I ain't done yet. And here's what you need to, you, you have to do this. You have to do this. There's only a gaggle of us here today, a very, very small number. Can you hear me back there behind the hay bales? You have to do this. We have turned the corner because finally we have a man who respects the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and working hard, playing hard shit kickers who earn their way, live within their means, and save for a rainy day in the asset column. Donald Trump is a huge upgrade. We, for the last eight years, and for many years before that, the government of this country was against we the people. The Second Amendment is gone. I'm just a guitar player and I never went to college. I was too busy learning shit. And I'll tell you what I learned. In my heart and soul, in my pure, we the people instinct, I know I was given the right to keep and bear arms by God. And the Founding Fathers wrote that self-evident truth down. I don't even need the Second Amendment. I think it's neat that they wrote it down, but I don't need it. So I fight like a son of a bitch and I put pressure on elected employees and the lying punks in the media and the anti-American punks in government who think that we work for them when in fact they're supposed to work for us guided by the Constitution. Yeah. So this is a good looking crowd, maybe the best representation of shit kicker America I've ever seen. But here's the truth, here's the truth. You don't mean jack shit. If you can't convince everybody at work, everybody you know, everybody in your club, everybody in your own family, everybody at school and church, if you can't convince them what the Second Amendment really means, then I'd like to thank you for nothing. Yeah. And that's how a punk-ass community organizer wheels, weaseled his way into the White House for eight years because Americans were sound asleep. So if you really mean what you are here representing, if you really mean it, you can have tomorrow off because it's Mother's Day. I give you that. A man has to know his limitations. Dirty Harry, 1971. Let's hear it for Dirty Harry. But starting Monday, and I know a lot of you do, a lot of you raise hell. A lot of you communicate with your elected officials. A lot of you keep we the people pressure on those who work for us and took an oath to the Constitution in order to work for us. And then they violate it all the time. Monday, you've got to convince your friends. If they're not a member of the NRA, Nancy Pelosi likes them. And if Nancy Pelosi likes you, you're an asshole. Any questions? Stop me if I get over. 
So you need to be a member of the NRA and everybody you know, a member of the Gun Owners of America. And we have great, great people here. I got to tell you, I wish I lived in a state where Chris Kobach was the governor. Yeah. And we have Larry Pratt here today, the founder of Gun Owners of America. We have Bob Hodgkin, the, the gunpowder guru, is here today. And we have the great warrior, Sheriff Richard Mack, the founder of the Constitutional Sheriffs and Police and Peace Officers Association. Remember that, and he's got a booth here. Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. You should be a member of that. And you need to convince everyone in your life they need to be members of pro-gun organizations. And they have, they must communicate with their elected employees to get rid of these insane laws where I have to have a federal permit for a muffler for my gun. This is embarrassing. This is nonsense. It's a muffler. By law, I have to have one on my lawnmower, but I need a federal permit for one for my gun. What is this? The cuckoo's nest? So if you can't convince your elected employees how stupid this is, then we deserve what we get. And by the way, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania constantly. And you know who won, you know who won the presidency and took it away from the felon Hillary Clinton? You know who won that? Licensed deer hunters, NRA members, gun owners of America members, and working hard, playing hard shit kickers who weren't gonna sit on their ass just because Mitt Romney brought a doily to a grenade fight. So I thank you for that. And those of you who are members in these organizations, thank you, you're great Americans. Those of you who raise hell with your elected employees, thank you. You're great Americans. I kick more ass. But remember, this isn't big enough. You must each know a hundred people who are not performing their We the People duties. You know who they are. It wasn't the enemy that won. It was those of us who knew better who didn't do anything. You don't wait for the coyote to get in the door. You shoot him 200 yards from the front yard. Yeah. Same goes for the accountability of elected employees. How about that it took the author of Wango Tango to, to come up with the clear and obvious identity of bureaucrats. There are elected employees. They work for us and they think we are here for their benefit. Now you've got some good guys, and certainly, again, I can't tell you enough, Chris Kobach is a warrior. This guy, this guy lives and breathes the Constitution, and he understands what an experiment in self-government is, and how glorious it is, and how dearly it is paid for. So I want to thank you that are here today, because you obviously care more. That's number one. You care more. You know that unarmed and helpless is unarmed and helpless. Yeah. Unarmed and helpless is irresponsible. And now, with the evidence inescapable that gun-free zones are the places where the most innocent lives are always lost, Hillary Clinton and Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein and Charlie Schumer and all the Democrats actually want more of them. They know that the most innocent lives are lost in gun-free zones and they want more of them. These people are freaks. And by the way, they use our tax dollars for their armed security detail. Are you kidding me? This is bizarro world. It's got that bad. So I thank those who are kicking ass. I encourage everyone to kick more ass. And what we can do here today is take this spirit where our fellow citizens here in Kansas are being persecuted for having an unlicensed muffler. This, 
and, and we argue whether we need secure borders or not. And we have a debate whether you ought to prove you're an American to vote. You gotta be kidding me! And I know you all have a great hunting season, and you have great weekends, we have lots of good. The whole world sucks. America still sucks less. Less every day with Donald Trump taking away the community yeah. punk ass organizers job. Yeah. But you know it's not perfect because if we're not persecuted, we can't wait because our neighbors and our fellow Americans are being persecuted. And I leave you with this, remember, all those flag draped coffins I salute, and I do it way more than I wish I had to. When I was in Afghanistan and Iraq and in Fallujah, I stood on that tarmac and cried like a baby for an hour. I didn't know where the tears were coming from. God bless you, Tim. And I saluted those coffins, a parade of flag draped coffins, and don't forget they died for the Constitution. If that doesn't drive you to stand up and fight harder, you have no soul. So, a salute to the good. Carry on and crush the bad and the ugly. I hope you have the most wonderful summer in the heartland of your lives. I hope you scare the living shit out of the politicians in Kansas. And I hope that you remember the most important thing I can leave you with, that every day is Mother's Day. So God bless you all. Thank you very much. Coming up now are some great patriots. The great Sheriff Rich Blair. But man, I love this damn country. God bless you. Thank you very much. How about that? Yeah. Uncle Ted! Yeah. Thank you. What do you think? Ted, Chris, thanks for coming out, guys. Okay. So we've had a lot of talking. We want to